Hi everyone, let's take out our view packets and what we're going to do is we're going to flip to the page that says genetics. When we talked about genetics earlier in the year, we talked about a molecule referred to as DNA. So let's jot that down. DNA is considered a molecule. It's going to be found in the nucleus. The nucleus is a specific type of organelle or structure. Remember, a lot of times they refer to this as the brain of the cell. That's because it really is the control center and it determines what's going on in the rest of the cell. DNA itself is made up of molecular bases and those molecular bases are the genetic code. Those molecular bases are represented by A, T, C, and G. And over here we have those base pairing rules. Remember the phrase all teachers go crazy. Therefore the A and the T are always paired up and then the C and the G are also always going to be paired up. If we look over here to the right you'll actually see what DNA looks like if it's not twisted. Remember when DNA is twisted we call that a double helix. Here it's not twisted. Each one of these letters represents a different base pair. Note that the G and C always are bonded together and the A and the always bonded together. Once again, we call these molecular bases. Next up, DNA is composed or made up of genes that code for proteins. This is very, very important. Genes code for proteins. Remember, a gene is really just a segment of DNA. Total inside of your body, you have about 20,000 genes. They code for proteins. What are specific types of proteins that we talked about earlier in the year? We talked about enzymes, antibodies, hormones, and receptors. So genes are really just tiny little segments of DNA. We have about 20,000 total in humans, and they code for specific proteins. Remember, proteins have a specific shape which is going to dictate or determine their specific function. Total, if we're talking about humans, we have 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs. Remember, we get those 46 chromosomes from our parents. We get half from our mom and half from our dad. Another thing, which is not listed on here, so let's put that over to the left, is going to be the organization of our genetic information. Over here, the nucleus. The nucleus is going to be actually where your DNA is, and in any given cell, you just have one nucleus. The nucleus is actually a pretty big organelle. It's actually one of the only organelles that we could see when we looked underneath the microscope. Next up, if we're talking about from an organizational standpoint, we have chromosomes. Total, we have 46 chromosomes. Finally, we have genes. Remember, we have about 20,000 genes. Because of that, all those genes have to be smushed into the nucleus. The genes themselves are the smallest. So if they asked you to organize it from biggest to smallest, it would be nucleus, chromosomes, genes. If they ask you which one is the most numerous, genes are actually the most numerous. The next thing we talked about was protein synthesis. A big important part of protein synthesis is going to be messenger RNA. Messenger RNA is made in the nucleus and travels to the ribosome. This is similar to DNA. Some differences though is that RNA is going to be a single helix, meaning it's made up of just one side and it twists. The other major difference is that the base pairing is a little bit different. Now instead of A matching up with T, 
A actually matches up with U. Remember, U stands for uracil. That's a change. A lot of times you're going to see the code, the genetic code, the molecular basis, in three messenger RNA bases. We refer to that as a codon. Protein synthesis happens inside of the ribosome. Remember, I said think of rib, rib-like proteins. So protein synthesis is occurring inside of the ribosomes. That's where proteins are going to be made. Proteins, sorry, ribosomes are going to be an example, again, of an organelle. The next part is this flow chart. And I see this flow chart a lot. It's asking for the organization of protein synthesis. So let's make sure that we highlight, let's make sure that we're highlighting that. And that's saying that the sequence of your bases, those four letters that we keep coming back to, those eventually determine your traits. But if we follow the flow chart, sequence of bases determine your sequence of amino acids. Remember, amino acids are going to be the building blocks of your proteins. Because of that, sequence of amino acids determines the shape of your protein, determines the function of your protein, and then finally your trait. This is very important. I'd make sure that I go home and I look over that a couple of times and I'm able to give the order of it when asked. Next up, we have gene expression. Gene expression is going to be influenced by environmental factors. We talked about a couple of different examples that had to do with this. One example was identical twins. We watched the Spanish case study where it showed identical twins are very similar when they are very little but then they become more and more different as they get older. That's because environmental factors are influencing what genes are expressed or turned on. All the cells in your body have the same DNA, but they do different functions. Why is that? It's because different genes are expressed, activated, turned on. All of those words mean the same thing in each cell. We talked a lot about this when we did reproduction. It's how every single cell in your body is going to get a different job. They have the same DNA though. Why are they able to do different things even though they have the same exact DNA? That has to do with that term differentiation. Sometimes instead of different functions, you might see specialized functions. That means the same exact thing. The last idea we have is mutation. Mutation is going to be when genes get a random change. A lot of times this happens during DNA replication. Remember, DNA replication is going to be when it makes a copy of itself. Some examples that you could have is insertion. Insertion is going to be when you add a base you can have deletion, which is going to be when you remove a base. And then finally, you can have substitution. That's going to be when you replace a base. Also remember that in order for a mutation to be passed on to the next generation, it must be present inside of the gametes. And remember your gametes are really just examples of sperm and egg.